Welcome to episode 16 of That's What I'm Saying, the podcast about hip-hop, entertainment, dating, relationships, social issues, sex, from a sometimes ratchet but mostly woke perspective. So please, subscribe to That's What I'm Saying, the podcast. We're on iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, Stitcher, anywhere you really listen to uh, your podcast. I'm Sean. What up, y'all? I'm Nye. How y'all doing? Hey, hey, I missed you, Nye. You've been, oh, you've been on hiatus. I'm back. Oh, my God. I was You've been away. MIA in South America. America. I've, been, I've been MIA here in Miami. We Fireworks, 4th of July, um, strip clubs. So I did tell you about, I went to the strip club. I went to G5 last weekend with some friends. And did I tell you that they had a Bahamian junk new band come up in the strip club, ran all the damn strippers off the stage, came through, came through stunting. It was, it was so, it was so fly. So that was my, my staycation while, while so we were, we were gone for the week. Yeah. But, um, Definitely, and we missed you guys. I was, I, girl, I was, I had y'all in my spirit, but girl, I was in my, I actually extended my trip there. So I, I left on the 28th, uh, left from New York June 28th, and I was supposed to come back on the 2nd, which was that Monday, but I extended my mm-hmm. stay to Wednesday. And I had a really, you know, I had a good time. That was my I first time. Did. So um, I'm brushing up on my spirit. I will say this though, girl, mm-hmm. I don't want another taco. Angelata, quesadilla, <laughs> being for a long motherfucking time. Look, I had it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Every day. Every, I know, every day. I'm done. Yeah. I had a good time. Um, I think I'm going to be going back there um, soon on a regular because I'm looking at like doing some investing out there. It's really inexpensive to live there. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of opportunities to do, um, to make some dinero. So, I'll be back out there soon before the year's out. That's good. Yeah, I haven't been to Mexico in quite a few years, probably like 10 years. So, and when I went, I, I just, my experience was I got so sick um, yeah. coming back out there. So that was like, that was a terrible experience to me, with me, for me. But um, mm-hmm. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I enjoyed my, like I said, I enjoyed myself here. Um, Fourth of July in Miami was definitely lit. It rained a little bit, but I did get to see the fireworks. Um, you know, the kid is up north with his dad, so I am free, free balling out here, y'all. Free balling. <laughs> yep. Um, definitely enjoying. So, up, uh, what do we call this episode? We Girl, do this I, don't, time. I don't know. We, 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 we gotta come back to that because, uh, I don't know. Okay, we'll get it together. All right, so let's get right into it. We got the Ratchet Minute. What we got for Ratchet? We we got to talk about uh, Pool Patrol Patty, Permit Patty, oh. Paul Block, Pool Cop, Man. Barbecue Becky. What is, what is going on with these white people calling the cops on us? They calling the cops on everybody. They calling the cops on kids mowing lawns. They calling the cops on kids selling water. They calling the cops on people barbecuing. Like, what the fuck is your problem? That is not your personal customer service line. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you got 911 as your technical support. I'm, I'm, it's not, that's not what it's made for. It's nobody's bothering you. We just live in life, and y'all can't stand it. And that's, you know, that's what it is. And I, I, I was listening to something they were just talking about, you know, their comfort is more important than, you know, being civilized with, towards us. That That's the most, the most important. I think those memes, though, were like off the chain because, this, and this is, to me, this is how we do. As Black people, you know, we can make comedy out of everything and that's how we deal with things so you know when the memes came up and you just see permit patty in a in a um <laughs> at reparations <laughs> in the underground railroad she all over the place i mean i think it's a way for us you know she was just photoshopped everywhere and it's a way for us to comment on racism bring it to the forefront yeah. at the same time it's 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 so crazy it's so ridiculous and i'm telling you we're living in the trump era that is i think that is why he is this administration has definitely given those type of people a voice. Mm-hmm. You know, I was I was looking at the video with uh, was it uh, pool Paul 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 Blart the pool cop, and you know he's he's ca- he's talking about everybody needs badges to go to the pool. Did you see that one? This yeah, the full the full video. Mm-hmm. And she called like, the police. You only came over to me. There's a there's a there's a bunch of people here. Why did you just come over to me? It's so, so crazy. So um, I, I have a story that happened probably the last, um, it was last week. So, you know, I was driving with a friend and we were in um, 
a very upscale part of uh, it was like near West Palm Beach. So anyway, the car in front of us, you know, we're driving in, uh, down this road. The car in front of us, this little dog ran out um, from a side street. The car in front of us hit the dog. So, mm -hmm. you know, everybody stop and we, you know, I'm talking about them white people came out the woodwork. The lady, some one the people out there crying. You know, the little dog was it was holding on, but I, you know, I, I, I don't think it made it. Um, so, but you know, the the guy hit it. You would have thought that they hit a, a live person. The lady called a nine one. I'm like, nine one is not for the dog. Are they going? The dog, are they going to CPR the dog. dog? What's the cop going to do? Girl, that's what it felt like. They were out there. That little dog, I mean, may may he rest in peace because I really don't think he made it. And, you know, everybody, it, it was people out there crying. I'm just like, you know, imagine this was a a, a black child out here in this road. Would these people be out here? They would have kept on rolling. Kept on that's what I'm saying. The lady called 911. I'm like, I'm pretty sure 911 is not um for the dog getting hit. <laughs> It's mm -hmm. like I'm pretty sure they told her to call animal control. It, it's just it 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 blows my mind because their response was just like, "Did you y'all just hit a dog?" I mean, you know, I feel bad. It was a dog, right, but, but it, it was a dog, y'all. They, they have a certain certain uh kinship to these animals. I don't I don't get it. They it's, it was just unbelievable. They, so I'm not really a pet uh, animal. I'm allergic to animals, so I don't really have that kinship to animals. They I'm I'm like keep them away from me because. That will ruin like yeah you are, <laughs> but, um, but yeah but these these white folks they just have a sense of entitlement. Um, this weekend I was um hanging out in Harlem and I was was late so I caught an Uber back to um back to where I live back to mm -hmm. the park. So and I did Uber pool which I always do because I'm very economical. Exactly. So I'm sitting on the passenger side but in the back seat, you know, because that's gonna be the side I'm gonna get out on. Mm -hmm. Lady, uh, I'm the first one in the car. So this older white lady, she comes and I see her coming from that from across the street. And so she comes in on my side to get in and she opens the door and she's okay. like, move over. And I could have easily moved over. But right. I, said, oh. but you, I know you didn't. I said, no, I said, <laughs> um, go on, on the other side. And she said, it's dangerous because cars are coming. I said, well, you just walk right past that door and there are no cars coming. So you could have easily came in there. Mm hmm. You don't want to go there. Then get in the front seat. There's no law against you not being in the front seat. <laughs> and, and and got in the front seat. But I'm like, first of all, her entitlement and um, the feeling of entitlement, right? Asking me to move over because it's dangerous for her to be in the traffic. But also, when it's time for me to get out, I live on a busy street. When it's time yes. for me to get out, I'm gonna be the one getting out on the busy street. Did she think about that? No. No. I'm a little happy ass. Get up. Get up in the front. That's right. Which, which now, now that you just mentioned that story, I have another story. Pretty mm -hmm. much, kind of the same thing. So I went to the movies this past weekend with my mother and my sister. So you know, you you pre you pick out the seats that you want in the movie. Mm -hmm. Funny enough, we went to go see the what's the movie? Uncle 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 Drew yeah. with Kyrie Irving. It was really cute. Anyway, so a family came. It was uh, a white family. There was the, obviously the father, the daughter, the and the father, two kids, and the wife. So it's, it's four of them. So on my right side, it's only three seats. So he comes, the, the you know, the father comes in. He's like, excuse me, do y'all mind moving down? Now, we could have moved down, mm -hmm. but who's to say that someone didn't buy the seats that we were moving down to? So, you know, I mean, you you know, you know my mother. My mother's like, so Ma, calm down. So no, you know, we're not going to move. He, that man was so upset. He was like, I don't understand why you can't, you know, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So he ends up going and sitting on the other side. He made sure he came back over. He's loud. It was just unbelievable. Like, stupid. Why did you buy? You bought those. You I already picked those seats. You knew mm -hmm. you have four people with you and it's only three seats. So that's your bad. You know, I don't understand why you can't move down. Guess case in point, like that's so feeling so entitled. I'm like, I'm here to watch Uncle Drew. I'm not moving down. Right. And you know, you know, Joy was all on it. I, was, I had to tell, calm, calm Harlem down. Harlem. <laughs> Stand up. <laughs> now, <laughs> but it, but the same thing that that sense of entitlement you know which is like he just assumed oh you're gonna can you move can you move down no I'm, not, I'm, I'm comfortable and then you know it's reclining seats i'm i'm comfortable no mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah. that's 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 some white folks for you
That is. I, I, mm -hmm. I will be, and I say this all the time, but I will be so glad when this reign of terror, and that's what I call it, a reign of terror. Because mm -hmm. they terrorize, they're terrorizing the whole fucking world, the whole earth. And and you know what? And they, when you get down to it, they're acting out of fear. Mm -hmm. Because when you when you peel this onion, all these layers back, the only thing, you know, it's this it's this unreasonable sense of fear that they have. That's why they're getting on the phone and saying all this crazy stuff. Because mm -hmm. you you know, it's it's the fear of a black planet. It really is because you know, if you look at the numbers, they are the minority. They are the minority of the world. There's a very small percentage of people who are white. And and actually the the actual um idea of whiteness keeps they keep expanding it because before it was a small mm -hmm. portion and now the Italians are included in it, the um the Jews are in, included right. in it. It kind of keep, keeps broadening up. But really, if you look at it, there are more people of color on this earth than there are white people. Absolutely. And they know that. And that's the Sophia of a black planet. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, and I think we have this innate survival of the fittest. And when you really get down to it, they they have every they have so many strikes against them. I don't want to get into the whole, you know, there's the melanin argument. There's there's so many different things that go into it that, you know, they they are an endangered species. They really so, are. Mm -hmm. So that's why you got a permit, Patty, who, you know, did you see the woman that she was like ducking behind a wall to get on the yeah, yeah. When she was calling the one, calling the, the cops on a girl you need a, water. You need a permit. And the what this that particular woman had a business selling weed, medicinal weed. And she just lost her business. I think yeah, they put her out of flush, the touch, flush touch stash right down the drain. Good for her. <laughs> Bye, boom. All right, all right. So moving on. Um, I wanted to, not that I wanted to, but I wanted to talk about R. Kelly, the latest revelation in his uh, sexcapades, what's going on. So I don't know if you heard this, um, but a woman came forward by the name of Geronda, and she said that she first um, had sex with uh, R. Kelly when she was about 16 years old, and he forced her to sign all these contracts, like non-disclosure agreements. So, I mean, he was like 50 Shades of Grey way before there was 50 Shades of Grey. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, they were kind of what I call pleasure contracts. So she was there to kind of please him and, and do all these things. But I, I think another interesting revelation that she made is that she claims that she witnessed um, a man named Bubba, who was R. Kelly's gay lover, giving him head and that uh, R. Kelly forced her to use a, sound like a big old black man dingo dildo <laughs> on his on his booty hole, um, mm -hmm. and that she got herpes from him. So mm -hmm. uh, he was paying her five thousand dollars a month in hush money, and when she went public with the story, uh, you know, money stopped stopped coming in. So, mm -hmm. what do you think of that? You know, I'm not surprised. There have been so many allegations and and stories of him with these underage girls. You know how I feel about him. He's disgusting. Um, in terms of the gay sex, I'm not surprised. With someone like mm -hmm. R. Kelly and someone who has like a sexual deviance, um, they I think they get to a point. I'm not saying he's gay or he's not gay, um, and 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 then that's up for debate too. Some people say just because you engage in a sexual act with the same oh person, come on I'm not, now. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying. Um, but I will say this: I have heard that um, some men they are so like deep into their sexual deviance that. It's, they're always looking for the next level of pleasure, the next level of pleasure. So I, I did that. Now I got to do this. Now I got to do that. Right. So if, even if he, you know, he's having sex with, with this man, I just think it's just levels to his sexual deviancy. Not saying that being gay is is deviant because love who you want to love. But in, in this case right here with R. Kelly, mm -hmm. because right. he, he is, he's sick. He's he's really sick. So I just think, I just see all of this is feeding, feeding into his sickness. So I'm sure he, I wouldn't even I wouldn't be surprised if he had a gay lover. I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, there's a story, you know, that come up where he's in the hospital and they got to take us a, a gerbil out of his butthole. I would not be surprised. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be like I wouldn't be surprised if there are stories coming out where he's having sex with animals. I would just would not be surprised with him. So, Ooh, yeah, I, I'm I, I just uh, I, I'm. Ugh. Duck. All right, moving on because I can't. I can't. Um, all right, what what else do we have? Um, so I see. Oh, so Trump is scheduled. This is. I don't even. I know we're in the ratchet. So this could be ratchet woke. Anything Trump to me is just fucking ratchet. But number forty five. Number forty five. Don't even say his name. Like forty five. 
So he's due to arrive in London uh, this Friday on a state visit. Mm-hmm. Which is really, which is really awkward because right now we're kind of at odds. Where he is at odds with with London um, because they are against so many of his policies. But anyway, he has this um, uh, this this uh, this visit scheduled, and so the people are protesting his visit. Um, mm-hmm. And the, the mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, gave the approval to for these folks. Uh, the citizens to fly a Trump baby balloon um, <laughs> close to the parliament <laughs> during this man's visit. I love it. Yeah, you have to Google this and see this little this little orange uh, Oompa Loompa. Is it, what is it like a head of him? Like what is it? Like it's, a bobblehead? No, it's like it's like a full body of of him, <laughs> but it's like it's round and it's it's grotesque looking. Um, it's hilarious. Um, so they're scheduled to do that for two hours um, on June 13th, which is the day before my birthday. Yay! What are we going to do? Okay, we'll talk about that later. Mm-hmm. So, uh, <laughs> so and, and the people are protesting. They, had, they were like 10,000 people that signed a, a petition um, to actually have this balloon. And thousands of people contributed to the crowdfunding to actually pay for the balloon. And they're going to be protests all across London for his three-day visit. So, you know, the, no, one like, no one likes Trump. Um, so they're protesting his visit and, and that's just what it is. So okay. how this goes. Um, yeah, again, I'm just, uh, anything that is pertaining to number 45 and, you know, I've had some experiences this past two weeks where I've talked to people, it, it I told you this, who support him, black people that look like us and, you know, it's, I've had some really huge debates about this man. So I'm just like, my stomach hurts. I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I just don't, I don't understand anyone um, who, who supports this man. I think it's hilarious. There's stories that are coming out now of like some of these, like, um, I don't want to say Mexican, South American folks that live, in, um, that live in the States that supported him, but are now at risk of being deported. You know, wow, isn't that? I told you the story of I have a friend who, um, her family is they're from Cuba Mm -hmm. and they, I'm talking about, had the Trump stickers on the cars and big signs out in front of their house. And the just, you know, without giving too much detail, so they basically harbor their illegal alien family members. Mm-hmm. It's like the craziest thing, but they but they love this man. They love number forty five, and just you know, just understanding the psyche around it, I, I don't I don't understand. Because in the meanwhile, you got Jorge hiding in the basement. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't get anybody. I don't get anyone any any person of color who who can. Uh, be on on the side of this man. It's those those uh, those MAGA hats make America great again. Th- that's like the new uh, hood. Who puts hood? It? Right. The the KKK. Yeah, I agree. Because because uh, really, when you think about it, when was America really great? And when mm-hmm. he's talking about making America great again, it, it he's talking about white dominance. Back exactly. Then. It was never really great for anyone of color. Honestly, it was never exactly. Great. Exactly. Unbelievable. <laughs> so, all right. So, well, that kind of goes into, I had uh, number 45, the uh, Trump administration is actually looking to do away with any admissions program, college admission program that takes race and ethnicity into account. So remember that Obama's administration basically recognized that schools had a quote unquote compelling interest in diverse populations. So although at the time race was not a primary factor in determining admission, it was something that could be lawfully considered with the goal of achieving a, a diversity in these in uh, colleges and universities. So um, in light of, I don't know if you heard, there is a lawsuit, Asian Americans basically got together and they're suing Harvard um, because they're suing Harvard and saying it's unlawful to limit the amount or the number of Asians that have been admitted um, because that's what Harvard was doing to kind of balance out the diversity in the numbers. Um, so now we have, you know, Trump is, is they're, they're doing away with, uh, basically a, it's an attack on a affirmative action. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to look at, I think what it's, what's going to happen is schools are, are being discouraged from, um, making sure there's racial diversity at the colleges. So this is just, you know, this is something I think that his administration, they promised it would be done. And this is in line with, um, the teachings, the, the ideology of, this administration, what do you think? 
Um, I don't, I don't agree with it. Of course, I don't agree with it at all. And you know, actually, Mayor De Blasio of um, of New York actually is proposing something similar to that. I, I don't. His his purpose is not the intent that Trump is doing it, but um, what he wants to do is to change um, the admission policy of some of these elite high schools and to get a, to do away with like the admissions policy of testing so that they can allow more students of color in. So, so okay. kind of the same thing, but for the opposite reason. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I just, you know, I think, are you, are you a product of any sort of affirmative action program? Um, am I? Um, I will say that when I was in like grade school, mm -hmm. elementary schools and middle schools, I, I was always in like the advanced classes. Um, it was it based off affirmative action. No, because the bitch was smart. But mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> but it, so it 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 may you know actually I don't even know what that selection pro process is because it it may have been they had a um a uh, an, a a a lot of amount uh, for students of color. So it, it could be an, uh, I have to ask actually if it was part of some sort of uh, affirmative affirmative action. But am I don't mm -hmm. I don't believe so. No. Yeah, I mean, yeah, in my adult years, no, but I mean, I've I've known people, I've seen the benefit of it. Mm -hmm. um, I think that race should be a factor to mm -hmm. kind of even stuff out, um, especially yeah. like when you get to college, especially in these universities. And, you know, I used to hear people, you ever hear people say, you know, I'm not a test taker. And, <laughs> you know, it, it I, I get it. You know, some of us, we we learn differently and not saying that it's 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 always race based, but it's something that needs should be should be considered. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I just this is your the reign of terror that you were talking about. This That's just right. Um, I'm I'm looking for this to end. This yeah, is, this is this has got to end. So. Um, yeah, affirmative action, I, you know, and I'm, I'm a, I'm a proponent of it. I, I don't, you know, I think there's some things in it. Mm -hmm. You know, honestly, the affirmative action really benefited white women more than it benefited other people. How so? Um, because it was, it was for, it, it came about during the whole, in the sixties when women were fighting for their rights. And so that's when affirmative action was actually implemented so that they can get their foot in the door in, in companies and colleges. So they actually benefited more, which is so funny because I don't think you, I don't know if you remember a few years ago where now I have to, some of this, some of the, the details are kind of foggy, but there was a woman who didn't get accepted into a college, a white girl didn't get, get, get accepted into the college because, mm -hmm. um, I guess it's because of her, her grades or whatever. And she was fighting affirmative action saying that someone black took her spot. <laughs> but really, you know, she was a, a mediocre student. You know, uh -huh. I feel like I've heard that before. It was a it was a white guy though that I heard the same thing, you know, and then he went around and sued and this this, this, this case was a white I forget her name. She was a white white girl, white blonde uh girl. But you know, really and that's when I kind of read up on affirmative action. I, and I read so many things about, you know, when it when the actual policies were implemented, it was really to benefit white women doing that whole um equal rights, you know, movement for women. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm, I'm just, all right, moving on. <laughs> what else we got? What you got? All right. Oh, so over um, last weekend, over the holiday, July 4th holiday, um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you heard of it, but this is a woman, uh, Teresa Patricia Akumo. Uh, she actually, mm -hmm. Yeah, she scaled the uh, the uh, Statue of Liberty. She was actually, I saw her perched over by the toes. <laughs> yeah, we're chilling. So she was... Um, it was like a four hour standoff of this woman. She was uh, on the Statue of Liberty and she was protesting um, the the immigration uh, policies of uh, 45. Mm. So there's like a four, a four hour standoff with them, uh, with the police. And, you know, eventually, you know, they got her down. She said she wasn't going to move until all the kids were free. Uh, you know, that really was. But, you know, I, I do st I do applaud her for taking a stance. Um, the fact that she's a part of a group called Rise and Resist, which I've never heard of. Um, and they were formed against immigration and customs enforcement uh, on Liberty Island. So um, okay. all of our social media, there was a lot of support for her. There was a lot of think pieces about, you know, what she did on. Um, so I read some things like on Twitter and Instagram. So she got a lot of support for that. So I, I do applaud her for, for taking a stance. I do, too. I do, too. Um, I, 
I, I would not have scaled the Statue of Liberty. Lord, I ain't been there since I was like 10 years old. I think the last time I was in Ellis Island was probably nine or 10. It's scary. Have you ever been? No, I've never been. I've always, I've seen, like, I've always taken the ferry. And if I have people that come visit, we take the ferry over to Staten Island to, to, to view it. Because that's, that's right. a nice ride. Um, I fell asleep one time. Like, it's, it, you, you take it at the right time, and the sun is, like, coming down, and it's warm, and you got the, the water splashing mm-hmm. on your face, like, the missing. <laughs> yeah, that is a, that's a good, like, 15-minute ride, and you can that's fall asleep. Beautiful. beautiful. But that's the only time I've ever seen Statue of Liberty. I've never been actually on Ellis Island. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I like I said, I probably the last time I was there, probably, like, 10, or, I was 10 or 11, it was, a, it was, it was scary to me to mm-hmm. go because it's I mean you're just out there and you know the steps you climb this little these steps to get to where she was it's like going um up in the Eiffel Tower you ever you ever been in the Eiffel Tower no I need to do a, a, a tourist okay. tour of New York oh yes oh yeah okay yeah yeah so yeah it, it just reminds me of that it's it's I'm not necessarily afraid of heights but it's something that'll have your heart in your mouth so I, I applaud her even for that for getting to where she was because even that is a, it's a, it's a, it's a bit of a, a daredevil hike, but, um, and I, and I'm, I'm definitely supportive of, of the move, you know, like I said, I, some, I, I probably wouldn't have done it, but, um, kudos for her for, um, you know, bringing some awareness to this ongoing, ongoing, ongoing problem. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, so what else, What? Where are we at now? Are yes, we, we can dig. We, we did pretty. Oh, yeah, we can dig. We did pretty <laughs> good. We did. We did woke ratchet, girl. This oh. has been a long overdue weekend for weekend day. I know. <laughs> I have so many huh? stories, but we're gonna have to ration these stories out. <laughs> Ooh, do tell. Do tell. You got one? Oh, I don't want to talk about it right now. We'll talk about it later. Okay. All right. <laughs> Moving on. Um, all right. So we got we we got a couple of questions that came in, but say okay, so here's the one. Mm-hmm. Um, it comes from one of our uh very, very supportive listeners. So she says, um, she recently caught a her married boss getting head from a coworker. Mm-hmm. Um, she said that her department they hold these parties and you know they were celebrating because they had hit their benchmark at the time and during the time she was on the floor, everybody was pretty empty. So she reached down to grab something from her desk. And then when she looked up to what she saw, she froze and she turned around and, and ran out of there. So basically she saw um, her boss getting head from a young coworker. She said the coworker is also two decades younger than the married boss. Um, so she's asking what should she do? She said, I've never experienced anything like this in my life. And in hindsight, it should have gone to HR. Our office is closed. So I know I, our office is closed. So I know I'm friendly with both of my coworkers, but I have no idea what to say. And since it's been a, a, a while, I'm also nervous. I won't be believed. What should I do? Um, I should add that my friends and I suspected that these two were having an affair, but we didn't want to believe it because it's because the boss is someone we trust and respect. So, hmm, should she, what should she do? Uh, keep your mouth shut. They got nothing yeah. to do with it. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I, I, that's what I'm saying. I, I agree. I don't think there's anything to tell here. There's nothing to see here, people. I, it's, it's, it's some head. Um, you know, it, it, I think the office, office affairs are, I th- they they they're messy. Long as yeah. you're not doing it or you're doing it outside of the office, it, there's no reason to get involved in somebody. You know, the two consenting adults, whether one is married or not, it's not your place. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I don't think you were traumatized by what you saw. Uh, yeah, it's 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 creepy. It's a little creepy, but mm-hmm. you know, yeah. I don't think there's anything to tell there. You know, I'm I'm not really big on office romances. I, I'm I know people that have met their forever booze at work. Um, I've I've never really been a, a you know a supporter of it. I did I did kind of date someone once, um, and, and I say date loosely because we just kind of used to hang out and have fun. Mm-hmm. But, um, and even still, I was always just so cautious, like you know, don't tell anybody we hang out. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> People are so nosy, you know. And I, mean, I, I agree. I like people I agree. In, in our business, and even uh, we're still we're still pretty cool to this day. But we, I just that was my first and only time, and I just it's just messy 
for me anyway, for me. I like no, I I agree. I think they're messy. I never engaged in in one myself, but I saw one right before my eyes go on, mm-hmm. you know, and let me let me be in my office on a late night and they're upstairs, you know, throwing stuff against the wall and getting it in. So, you know, it's un- it, it's a little bit uncomfortable, but you know, it's none of my business, honestly. Keep it moving. Keep keep it the you know if keep her if she were calculated you know she can leverage that to her benefit. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Woo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, so I have I don't know what her her uh, level is on um in the company and you know what she aspires to be in the company, but you know she may want to keep that in the back maybe. of her mind. This could be a leg up, girl. You know what I'm <laughs> Take, take it, take your time, do it right. What? There's so many avenues to explore with this. No. <laughs> think about this real quick. <laughs> Don't run the HR so fast. Just yet. It. Yep. Get your get your camera phone ready. Yeah. Your your voice your voice recorder. <laughs> <laughs> Strategically right place yourself yeah. outside by the car. Right place at the right time. I'm just saying. You'll come up. Well, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, yeah, I, know, I wouldn't. Yeah. yeah, keep it to yourself, girl. Enjoy the show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, moving on. We where are we at now? We are. I reminisce. Reminisce. Yeah. Yes. yes, it's your reminisce, Nye. It is. It is. And I thought it was just really befitting because this is like the beginning of summertime, and so I wanted to to shout out uh, "Summertime" by DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. Yes. I, I, I wasn't a, a huge fan of theirs. You know, it was cute back in the day when, you know, I had uh, parents dressing on the stand. It was a cute little When this came out, I was like, this is a totally different sound uh, from what they had before. And I remember this song because right when it came out, um, my my aunt and uncle, um, they had this beach house in, in Whitestone, Virginia. And we had one mm-hmm. weekend. And uh, their next door neighbor, this older, older, older black man, had a pool. And so while all adults were like at the beach or in the house, I was in the pool. And I met this little cutie there. Boy, we <laughs> and that song was in my mind. He was from Philly too. I forget his name. I was like maybe like 13 or 14. Oh, that's so cute. And going into uh, to ninth grade, like you know, the upcoming school year. So this song always brings back that memory. So I, I kind of felt like I was kind of moving from girlhood to like young adulthood a little bit mm-hmm. uh, myself met this cute little you know this little cutie from philly um so i, I like this song and it's a, it's a dope song you know it's a super dope song it was actually produced when i was doing some research on it by these group of uh producers i've never even heard of these people i think they're american uh k singers hulu and roland edison um Ooh, roland. yeah i don't i don't know who they are so I told you the word on the street about this song, as I understand it, was that um, Rakim wrote the lyrics. He was the ghostwriter for this. I can with, I it. And that's with, not why I like this so much. Cause I'm like, this doesn't sound anything like what they do. Doesn't sound, yes. Which I told you when I said, look, this is what I know. I, and I, I put it on Twitter. I, you would have thought it was gonna come from my head, girl. And people were so <laughs> adamant that Rakim did not write these lyrics mm-hmm. for uh, what's his fresh? What's his name? The Fresh Prince? Yes, yeah, for Fresh Prince, DJ Jack for the Fresh Prince. That they, they didn't need to write these, but if you listen to it, yeah, here it, it is. It's really slightly transformed, just a bit of a break from the norm, just a little yeah. stuff to break from monotony. All of his hardcore dance that got me. How he, the flow of it, the tone of his voice, how he made his voice deeper, the flow of it, it sounds like a rock him song. Thank it you. Sounds just Thank like you. It. So I, I, I rest my case. Sources already put me on, I said it, I believe it. And if you listen to it, I mean, you know, and uh, the, the debate got so heated and they're like, you know, Rock Him said he didn't write him. Like, well, he's a ghostwriter. What ghostwriter, you know? It says, I wrote the song. They it's on a confidentiality call. They can't. Thank you. you. He's, not, he's never going to admit it. Right. He's never going to say he took his check and ran with it, mm-hmm. whatever he did with it. But so it was, it was a high, it was very heated debate on where the, because these lyrics did not come from Fresh Prince. I don't so. think any of 
Well, maybe. I don't think a lot of Fresh Prince lyrics came from him. Because I, I I know some people that actually go throw for him. The Miami song. I know mm-hmm. Mike wrote that song. Oh, oh yeah, who? Can we, um, can we, can we talk about who, who, who did that? Um, Kel. I don't know if you know Kel. Um, what's his name? Kel. He, he, um, hold on. Let me look my real quick on uh, Instagram and get his actual name. <laughs> uh, I know him by Kel Spencer. Okay. I was in school with him. We called him Lenny in, in, uh, in college, but his name is Kel Spencer. And uh, he's been in hip hop for years. He actually, um, no, he didn't do this. But he actually, uh, he used to work with Fresh Prince for, for many years, and he wrote the, the, the Miami song. Miami song. Yeah. So, I mean, I, you know, I think Will is, has always been a performer, mm-hmm. um, not necessarily a lyricist. So, you know, big thing. But, the, but that song was definitely, I think, what year did that come, did that come out? What year did something come out? I want to say not to be like ninety seven. No, it was before. I wasn't in high school. It was like um, I, I want to say ninety, like maybe ninety one. Hold on. Really? It wasn't ninety seven. It wasn't ninety seven. Um, let me see. Um, yeah, I just saw. Ooh, it was released on my birthday, May twentieth, nineteen ninety one. Okay, yeah, it was because it was right before I went to uh, to high school. I remember that because I remember I met that cute boy. Oh Lord, <laughs> I think this was a song that when it first came out, I honestly thought it was corny, and but they played it so much, I can appreciate it now. And after a while, you know, after a while, I think when you when you um when you travel a little bit and this this song comes on in the summertime, it's mm-hmm. like it it's a, it's it provides like the the soundtrack to yeah. your life. But at the time, I just remember when it came out, I was like, oh, this is, you know, because it's, it's it's Fresh Prince. And I think this was his, is after the parents just don't understand. So he had already did that, right? Yeah, that, yeah, that came out years after that. He was like married with a kid or almost had a kid. He was married or whatever um, when this song came out. So it's first life. Yeah, but, so that's, he was but it, it was, it's, and they just, I just remember Hot 97 played this song. It, that was all you heard but I can appreciate it so much more now and like I said knowing that Rakim has something to do with this so that you hear it is so it's so smooth yeah and the, it was sampled from uh cool in the gang uh summer madness which interesting yes. was the intro to baby boy um I don't know if you've ever seen baby boy of course girl that was on that actually was on probably a, a, about two weeks ago and I watched it again Baby boy is always playing somewhere. <laughs> Jody, Jody, <laughs> bring my car back, Jody. <laughs> Girl, that that movie is so terrible, but I watch it all. I love that movie though. It's like I, terrible, but I watch it every time it comes on. It is, and just to add, so cool in the gang. I told you that um, the lead singer used to do my hair right back in the day. He oh, was cool. a. He, yeah. Um, no, you never told me that. <laughs> I did tell you this. I did. Uh, Robert, what was his name? Robert, the 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 um, the lead singer, Joe Anna. I, yeah, he had a shop in um in Hackensack in Jersey, oh. and back when I used to get a perm and my perms were forty five dollars, he used to lay he used to lay it. <laughs> I am not gonna get the I, yeah, I, I kid you not. Um, I'm sorry, James, JT Taylor. Okay, he yeah. had a shop and he was a hairstylist. Is he, is he gay? I don't think he was. I mean, okay, because he know. had. I think he had like a wife and he had kids. He had daughters. Mm-hmm. But you know that don't make no never mind. But I don't, you know. But he was he liked hair. Yeah. And I was I was young. I was probably like 11 or 12 years old. I was back in the day, and me and my sister, my mother would give it would write a check like a blank check. <laughs> Go, go, go! Get your perm, girl. <laughs> J J T Taylor. Yes, yes. So that was my my um, you know. And I was I was young. I was like, oh, you know who Cool in the Gang is, right? Like mm-hmm. he does hair, girl. Okay, I right. don't <laughs> girl. Little known, fact, little known fact. Yes, yes. So okay. Um, where are we at now? I just. Uh, I think I totally... support black businesses. Are are we there? Yeah, we're there. Okay. We're there. Okay. Um, what what's the black business? Because I just lost all of my information. Okay. So you well, I'm just reading what you have. Um, it's uh Maya Vanna, the beauty technology company. Maya Vanna. Yes. Yes. Okay. So 
I think I got it back up now. I'm good. All right. So my Havana is a um, let's see, because I've I've used them before. So they're basically a beauty beauty tech company, and they specialize in healthy hair care science. So the science of your hair. So basically. What you do is you can find out what your hair needs. You send them like a sample and they analyze the locks for you. Mm -hmm. So I've actually done this. They send you like this little hair analysis kit and you send it back in and then they could tell you um, all kind of things about your hair. They give you like an actual report and they tell you, um, you know, what ingredients or what nutrients are lacking and what you need for your hair. So it's like a, and, and honestly, I like it because they don't, they have products that they sell, mm -hmm. but they'll tell you, okay, if you, you know, if you're lacking in, in some ingredient, you can get it anywhere. You know, you don't have to necessarily go with all of their products, which I, I think is a, is a nice plug for them. So um, my Havana was started, let's see, do I have that? Um, I remember it was like four women engineers. They're from Georgia Tech, and they started this company. Mm -hmm. um, so we're supporting the black businesses. It's My Avana. It's M Y A V A N A dot com. Uh huh. And they have their products and they have their services. And it's really, you know, they have different tiers. It's really inexpensive for I think thirty nine dollars or something like that. You can get a full hair analysis. So, oh. um, definitely supporting them in what they do. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Okay. Yeah, cool. I like I I I like the idea. I love the idea. Like I said, I've I've used their services. I'm actually gonna do it for my do it for my son. Mm -hmm. and see what's going on. So, all right, where are we at now? You know what? We're at the end, but I do want to talk about something else really, really quickly. So, um, before I went to Miami, uh, not Miami, damn it. Before I went to Mexico, um, our producer, uh, Vegas World, he invited me. He got tickets to see um, this documentary on. Um, Bobito Garcia? Yeah, you know, Bobito. Bobito. So it was in Central Park. It was a showing of a documentary uh, on him. So, you know, I know Bobito. I've, you know, I've heard of him stretching Bobito. I've seen some of the stuff that he's done. You know, he used to work for um, mm -hmm. some, um, some labels. He did work at magazines. So I went, you know, just to go check it out. Uh, it's a part of hip hop history. Um, it's called Rubber Rock 45s. Let me tell you, this mm -hmm. is so inspiring he has done so, like he has done so much stuff sean like right. every time i'm like okay this document is about to be over right he did, some of his, he did something else he, like he has um you know he's a, a big you know he's into music he's into hip-hop he's also into sneakers so he's done a lot like he's done um he's had like nonprofits go to africa and do like oh, wow and donate sneakers he's designed sneakers he has um, worked for different um, um, record labels. He has done, he's done so much. He's, he started like basketball tournaments um, for the kids. And one of the things he talked about oh, wow. growing up, um, is that he had a lot of adversity growing up. Um, you know, his, his father was an alcoholic. Um, his mom, you know, she's very supportive. She had like a 10,000 jobs, but you know, he was, you know, he was abused as a kid by another oh, wow. kid. And so he talked about this throughout, you know, um, throughout, you know, the documentary. Right. It was, just, it was just really powerful because a lot of, a lot of men don't really admit to, to stuff like that. Uh, what kind of abuse? I'm, I'm, I'm asking. It was sexual abuse. Oh, wow. Sexual abuse by another kid. Um, and so later on in life, he actually con confronted this kid. Well, they were adults at this point, but um, he confronted him and, you know, uh, forgave him because you know they were both kids and the guy was like you know you have so much bravery because I couldn't do what you just did you know it happened wow wait who said that who said that the abuser said that to Bobito it was like you you are so brave for you know confronting me about this because I didn't have the courage to do it you know what yeah oh wow I mean, what is it called what's this documentary called because now it's I want to see rubber it rubber rock 45 and you know what I do like to keep me motivated and, and keep my spirits lifted. I do, I read a lot of um, biographies of successful people or I watch documentaries or mm -hmm. read articles. Um, but if, if you, if, I suggest anyone go look at this documentary because this dude has done so much and his, he's like 50 something years old. He looks yeah, I think he's in his fifties. And you know, I, I, I remember him because of the connection with, um, 
uh, like Fat Joe and Big Pun, you know, mm -hmm. like that was that was my how, you know, introduced him. And I knew he was into sneakers because he had a show. Um, I don't know, like when he had a sneaker show mm -hmm. where he basically like talked to different celebrities about their sneaker collection. So I remember him from that. I knew, um, you know, he was definitely in the sneakers. And I know he's like he's like an old school like I've I've been to parties before where he's He's that old school DJ that brings the crates of records. Yeah, you actually next time when you come to come to New York, you gotta go. It's it's him and like Stretch and D Nice and I think Clark Kent is a part of it. It's called the Originals. Uh, Rich Medina. It's called the Originals, and they do like a monthly party. And it's oh, wow. super dope because they rock in all like the forty fives and like all like obscure like hip hop and soul music and and you know uh, Spanish music. It's it's a dope party. So next time, where is it at? It's done somewhere downtown, like in the meatpacking district. Um, it, it changes venues, you know, every once in a while. So it's not like at one spot every time. But it's a yeah. dope, a dope party. It's a super dope party. That'd be cool. Yeah, because I went to Stretch Armstrong was actually here maybe a month or two ago. I went to a party and, you know, because I feel like I'm such an old school hip hop head enthusiast. Mm -hmm. I'm the only one that was really feeling it. That's how I feel. Like when I go to these different venues and if it's not, if it's outside of New York, it's just like the culture is, it's been so washed, washed out. So people didn't, I felt like the crowd didn't really value and understand mm -hmm. the greatness that was before them. You know, like he, he had a turn, he was, on, he had turntables, you know, and I'm talking about um, Stretch Armstrong. Mm -hmm. um, but just, you know, that there's an art form there. Yeah, it that is. we that we need to preserve. So I, I, you know, I value that, and you know, I definitely, um, I want to see this documentary. I'm gonna, I'm gonna check it out. But yeah, uh, Bobito, Bobito. Yeah, it was pretty cool. And at the, uh, he was DJing before the actual documentary started, and he was doing all 45s, like everything. <laughs> was doing fucking 45. <laughs> I love it. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Oh, I love it. All right. So next time, yeah, next time I come to New York, we gotta we gotta coordinate it so it's around the time we can go to one of the shows. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, cool. All right. Well, I think we have come to an end. We had a good show. Uh, still don't have a name for it, but we're gonna come up with one by the time this goes live. So um you can subscribe to That's What I'm Saying, the podcast and the Apple Podcast app, Google Play, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Stitcher. We're also on Cast, is it Cast Pot? Cast Box. Cast. Um, and Cast Pot, which is, like I said, uber convenient. You can put all of your podcasts on there. Please, please, please follow us on Facebook. We're on Instagram Instagram and Twitter. Our Twitter handle is That's What I Say 3. Visit That's What I'm Saying Podcast.com to learn more. Send us questions and comments. We love it, especially the dick stuff. Um, the dick minute, please. <laughs> fill us up. We need, fill us up with some dick <laughs> for our dick minute. <laughs> Um, and die. who are we shouting out? We always got to shout out our super, super mega producer, Vegas World Inc. You can find him on Instagram. You can find him on Twitter. Um, he's super dope. Um, so yeah, Vegas World Inc. We Very good. So thank you all for listening, subscribing, and liking us on social media. Until next week. Peace. Take care. Drop, drop it on the random. <laughs>